baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6.3-6. 6, 3 -6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Come on, don't you know He's worthy? And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, in verse 27, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Amen. I want to hear the word of the Lord tonight, don't you? I want to have a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. I have prayed, I have sought God, I have fasted. I don't say that to brag tonight, but I'm telling you, I want God to do a work in this house tonight. Amen. I understand that we could come and we could be motivated, we could be hyped up, we could be excited, and that could all last just for the moment, but I want something that will be lasting, lasting for eternity tonight. Amen. But we're going to have to put something in this. We're going to have to be willing to pray tonight. We're going to have to be willing to do our part. Amen. I, don't, I want us to make sure that our hearts are ready to receive the Word of God. Amen. I'm going to go to verse 27 one more time. This is where I take my text. He said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. I want to preach to you about learning to pray too late. Learning to pray too late. Won't you pray together one more time and ask the Holy Ghost to have His way? Jesus. Come on, let's pray fervently tonight, young people. Hallelujah, Jesus, we need You. God, we're dependent upon You tonight. We thank You for every song, God. We thank You for every testimony. We thank You for Your Spirit that we have felt in this house tonight. But God, right now, we're depending upon a continual flow of that anointing. We're praying, God, for a divine unction, Lord. We're praying, God, for Your anointing to destroy every yoke in this house. Help us, God, to receive with meekness Your Word. Help us, God, to respond to the presence of God, to give You the glory, the praise that You're worthy of tonight. God, save, deliver, set free, encourage. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's everybody clap our hands unto the Lord one more time. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If you're going to help me preach, you may be seated just for a moment or two tonight. Amen. I want to say that uh, prayer is a necessity. Prayer is not optional. We are mandated by the Scripture to pray. Luke 18 and 1 says men ought always to pray 
and not to faint. First Chronicles 16 and 11 says, Seek His face continually. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, Pray without ceasing. The Bible admonishes us to continue instant in prayer. First Timothy 2 and 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. I wonder if we got any real men in this house tonight that believe in the power of prayer, that have gathered in this place on this Friday evening one more time. And we've come not just to play some kind of a game after church, but we've gathered in this place to pray. We've gathered in this place to worship the Lord. Is anybody here that feels like that tonight? Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. I still believe the Word of God is right. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. I believe there's power in prayer tonight. I believe prayer still works tonight. Amen. We're a product of prayer. I'm in the house of God because somebody took the time and somebody prayed for me. You're here tonight because somebody prayed for you. Some of you have health in your body because one time you were sick. Amen. But somebody didn't give up. They just kept on a praying. They just kept... I believe in the power of prayer tonight. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Prayer works. Amen. Prayer works. Prayer is not an effort in futility. Prayer works. Prayer is not a waste of time. I say prayer works. Elijah prayed and the fire fell and consumed the sacrifice. Prayer works tonight. Hannah prayed and the Lord gave a child. Daniel prayed for 21 days, but God let him know he heard him from the very first time he called. You're here tonight and maybe you've been praying about something for a long time, but guess what? You're back in the house of God one more time, and you come to pray one more time, I'm telling you, let's not give up. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. If you've been seeking, you just keep on seeking. If you've been knocking, you just keep on knocking. Let's not give up yet. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. Some of you have been praying for revival. Don't give up on it. Just keep on praying. Some of you have been praying for your lost loved ones. Don't give up. I say we pray again one more time tonight on this youth rally. Hey, devil, we're not giving up without a fight. We're not giving up. We're not throwing in the white towel of surrender just yet. We've not prayed the last one through yet. We've not seen the last one repent of their sins at First Pentecostal Church or wherever you're from. We still believe in an in time out pouring in this hour. Hey, come on. Hallelujah. Let's have a little church here tonight. I still believe it's the will of God for us to win the loss. I still believe it's the will of God for us to reach our city. I still believe it's the will of God for people to repent, get baptized, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. I still believe that if we pray, heaven will answer. Heaven will come down. Even tonight, on this night, if you'll pray, God will hear and God will answer. Oh, hallelujah. I'll give it to Him tonight. Give the praise to Him tonight. Hey, devil, I might have come in here weak tonight. I might have come in here tired tonight. I might have come in here weary tonight. I may have come in here discouraged tonight. But I don't have to leave the same way I came in here. There's power in prayer. I come to pray. Tonight, uh, I come to call on God tonight. Young people, we got to get a hold of this tonight. Uh, we got to get it in our heart. Uh, we got to get it in our spirit tonight. We got to believe in the power of prayer. Woo! Listen, 
somebody saying, I want to be, I want to be a prayer warrior. Amen. I want to be a good preacher, but it's got to start. I've got to be a good prayer warrior. I've got to learn how to call on God. I've got to have a secret place. I've got to have a cause and a prayer. When everybody else is running and playing games, there's times i got to steal away and say, I can't do that. There's a spirit that's beckoning me to come and pray and seek the face of God. Some have said, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee. If you feel the joy and power to pray tonight, you're a blessed man. You're a blessed woman tonight. If you feel the spirit of prayer, let's lift our hands and pray right now. Come on, ask the Lord to let a spirit of prayer move in here before this service is over tonight. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Is any sick among you or is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Anybody believe this tonight? And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, he shall be forgiven. Hey, if you're a sinner here tonight, you're in the right place. Amen. If you're bound by drugs and alcohol, sin of perversion, you're in the right place tonight. There's forgiveness in the house of God. There's mercy in the house of God. Calvary's blood is falling at first to the coast of church tonight. If you'll pray, if you'll repent, you can be forgiven. You can be restored tonight. Oh, I feel like there's somebody in the house of God that needs restoration. It's here in this house. Somebody that's discouraged. Hey Amen. There's encouragement in the house of God tonight. May be seated. Confess your faults one for another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And the Bible says that Elias was a man. Subject to like passions, uh, such as we are. And he prayed, I know this is simple tonight. I know this is old hat, but just let me preach a little bit here tonight. He prayed earnestly. That's what we need to do tonight. Uh, we need some people that will pray with a fervent prayer and pray earnestly tonight. Prayed that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. Uh, that's what we need to do. We need to pray again tonight. Come on now. One time ain't enough. We need to come back again and again and again. Amen. We need that continual prayer life. Oh, let me preach tonight as I feel it. Oh, yeah. It's easy to pray on a night like tonight when your neighbor's praying. But we need to pray when nobody else is praying. Yeah. It's easy to worship God uh, when your neighbor's dancing and clapping and praising God. But what about you? Uh, if nobody's doing it, uh, you need to make up your mind. I'm going to worship God. Uh, I'm going to praise God. Come on now. That's when we'll have a real move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, when somebody comes and says, Pastor, if nobody is going to get with you, you can count on me. Uh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to pray. Uh, I'm going to worship God. Woo! Oh, I feel something in this place tonight. I feel a breakthrough on the way for somebody if you'll call on the Lord. Devil don't like this tonight. Devil don't like this kind of praying tonight. Devil don't like this kind of preaching tonight. Devil don't like this kind of worship tonight. But does anybody care what the devil likes here? I tell you what, what makes me want to do, makes me want to preach that much harder, makes me want to worship that much more, makes me want to praise God with that much more of a fervency. Woo! Shake off that pride tonight and let's have church. Come on. 
Get beside yourself. Let's have church tonight. Devil's afraid somebody's going to pray back through to the Holy Ghost tonight. The devil's afraid some backslidden young person is going to repent of their sins tonight. Well, devil, you got that right. Because we got our mind made up. We come for a move of God tonight. We don't care what the devil don't allow. We're going to praise God anyhow. We're going to worship. Hey, young men, we're going to worship God anyhow tonight. Come on. I don't care if I get a little sweaty. I don't care if my tie gets a little messed up. I come to have church tonight. I didn't come all the way from the hills of West Virginia just to preach a fancy sermon. I come for a real genuine move of the Holy Ghost. Woo. Hey, Amen. I've been to one too many rallies uh, where they just tried to organize everything to where they organized the move of the Holy Ghost out. But I don't feel that spirit around here tonight. I feel liberty to preach tonight. I feel like somebody could get the victory tonight. I feel like somebody could pray through tonight. I feel like somebody could repent tonight. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of times you may be seated. A lot of times we get all worried about what's going to go on after church. We get worried about what's going to happen at the gym or what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not worried about any of that right now. I'm only worried about somebody praying. Hey, eternity is at stake for somebody. They may not have tomorrow. They may only have tonight. we got to make the most of this. Amen. My wife said, you're going to be long-winded tonight. Amen. I said, I don't know if I'm going to be long-winded or not. I really don't want to be. But I'm going to preach as long as the Holy Ghost wants me to preach tonight. I didn't say that to embarrass her tonight. But let me just say this. Just in case anybody else is wondering, I'm going to preach as long as the Holy Ghost wants me to preach tonight. And there's some more young people in here. They're going to be here as long as the Holy Ghost is here tonight. God, if you want me to lay on an altar for three hours, I'll be here. i got to pray through. I've got to get something in my spirit before I leave here. Woo, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, you can do better than that. Now say, do it. Well, they didn't listen to you. Come on, let's do a little better than that. Let's praise Him tonight. Amen. Let me go on just a little more tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, prayer works. Prayer works. Let me brag on Jesus just a little bit tonight. Is that all right? Amen. We got an elderly sister in our church. Amen. She comes and she comes and worships with a fervency. She praises God, Brother Hare. If nobody else is praising God. Amen. That old lady is 70 some upper 70s. She worships God. She dances. If nobody else is dancing, she's going to be the first one out there. But I'm going to tell you what. God's been good to that lady. Amen. She was diagnosed with a tumor in her body. Amen. But she didn't just begin acting that way because of what God done. She had a lifestyle of doing I'm telling you, we don't need to just wait until... The battle comes our way before we begin to pray and call on God. You need to develop a lifestyle right now, young people, because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Don't wait too late to pray. You don't know what's going to happen your next trip to the doctor. You don't know what's going to happen when you get in your automobile tonight. You're not promised tomorrow. I'm telling you, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Don't wait too late to pray. Hey, 
Amen. You may be seated. Amen. But she came up one night. Amen. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody touched her. But they just began to pray. And she had faith. And she come up and began to pray. And God touched her body. And God healed her of a cancerous tumor. I'm telling you, there's power in prayer. Amen. Another lady by the name of Sister Ballard. Sister Ballard came to church. She said, I went to the doctor. Amen. And by the way, she was a praying lady. She was a worshiping lady. And she worshiped God when she got the bad report. I went to the doctor, and they said, I've got a cancerous brain tumor. Amen. But she come back to the house of God. She didn't get all down in the lip. I'm telling you, sometimes, young people, we can we can be so wishy-washy, and we can be so up and down. And you know what? If some boy didn't treat you right, young girls, you'll come in and you act like you take it out on God. Nobody does that in Jennings, surely. Come on, your best friend didn't treat you just right, and they didn't talk to you, and they, you know, they kind of snubbed you a little bit, and so you come and you want to sit out on God. Everything's not going to be perfect. Life is not a bed of roses, but I'm going to tell you what. God's going to honor the one that's going to be steady, the one that's going to be consistent. God will move for somebody like that. If you lose all your friends, you still have a friend in Jesus. He's a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. God's not good just some of the time. He's good all the time. Therefore, I think I'll do like the psalmist said. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. May be seated. Hey, man, Brother Tally, I'm an old man. I can't keep this up. Let me slow down for just a couple of minutes here. Praise the Lord. Hey, man, Sister Ballard came. Uh, hey, man, they prayed for her, anointed her with oil. Like the Bible says, uh, in the name of the Lord, the prayer of faith did heal her body. Uh, she no longer has a cancerous tumor. Hey, man, she's praising God. She's rejoicing in the house of God because there's power in prayer. Ah, move in here, Holy Ghost, tonight. Hallelujah. We were having, in our church, it seemed like nobody was being able to conceive babies. And so, Brother Brad Lambeth really got a burden about that and began to pray. And he called the pastor and he said, I really feel like I've got something from the Lord. And he said, I want to come and I want to pray. I'm a, I want to preach. And, and my, he preached and the Holy Ghost moved in that place. And, and he began to pray over couples that couldn't have any children. Amen. And then he met with the pastor's family in the office and he prayed over all the family. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm happy to report to you that wasn't very long ago. But since that time, we have four different couples, uh, amen, with four new babies uh, in the house of God. I say there's power in prayer. I say there's power in prayer. Look out, devil. Uh, we come to pray about it tonight. Uh, we didn't come to complain about it. Uh, we didn't come to hang our head about it. Uh, we come to say, one more time, I'm going back to that altar. I'm going to pray about it tonight. Not only that, since we've been here in Jennings, uh, we got a phone call. And my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, my wife's youngest sister, amen, they had no children. And they, got, they called us and said, they went to the doctor and they said they're going to have twins uh, and maybe triplets. Uh, I say, when God does it, He does it right. Hey, what you come in here with tonight? What kind of problem? What kind of burden? What kind of situation? God's able to meet you. God's able to touch you. God's able to move for you tonight. Oh, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Worship God. Might have come in here with a frown, but you can leave here with a smile. You might have come in here dragging, but you can leave here with a spring in your step uh, if you'll pray tonight. Yeah. Hey, man, you may be seated. We need some young people that will learn how to pray until they get a fire burning in their soul. Uh, and they come back into this house. Uh, amen. And they set somebody else a fire. Hey, pastor, it's going to be easier after tonight. Uh, I'm going to find myself a prayer room. Uh, I'm going to find myself. I'm going to dig out a prayer life. Uh, I'm going to find myself a prayer closet. 
Hallelujah. There's all kinds of things that we're trying to deal with and figure out. All kinds of new technology and things coming our way. And I don't know what the answers are to all of them. All kinds of music styles and all kinds of things. And we don't know how to handle it all. But I'm going to tell you what will help. If you get this deep in your heart, young people. Amen. If you make up your mind, I'm going to pray. I'm going to get a prayer life. It's going to be easier on the pastor. He's not going to have to draw the lines for you. If you get a walk with God for yourself. Amen. I'm not trying to eliminate the need for preaching. I'm not trying to eliminate the need to draw lines. But I'm going to tell you what. It's going to make it a whole lot easier. And the pastor is not going to have to tell you everything you can't listen to. And every way you can't go. If you get it deep in your heart and say, Pastor, it's not only your conviction. But now because of a prayer cause that God took his finger and he wrote his law in my heart. Lift our hands and love the Lord tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I look and see several young men that are in this congregation tonight. I'm thankful for these young men that love God and are worshiping God with a fervor. Let me tell you, if you have any ambition to do anything for God, and if you ever want to have a call of God on your life, it's got to start in a prayer room. The launching pad for every new dimension in your walk with God is a prayer closet. Don't come and say, Pastor, I want to be an usher if you don't have a prayer life. Don't come and say, Pastor, I want to sing in the choir if you don't have a prayer life. Hear me, young ladies. Uh, Amen. Don't say, I want to sing a solo uh, if I don't have a prayer life. No. uh, Get you a prayer life first. Uh, Get you a prayer closet first. uh, And see what kind of doors God uh, will open up for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone said to our modern Christianity, praying is foreign. That was said in 1961. Amen. If that was said in 1961, what could be said in the year 2008? I'm telling you, we need to pray more now than ever before. Somebody said apostolic production today demands from us apostolic precedent. Before Pentecost was fully come, the disciples prayed. And as they were praying, the Spirit fell on them. After Pentecost, we discover that 28 chapters in the book of Acts mention prayer, for they continued in prayer. I was, I was excited as our brother stood up here tonight and began to testify about the power of God that drew him at the age of six years of age. But I'm going to tell you what started that. It was because this church was built on prayer. This church was built on worship. This church was built on the power of God. Could I beg and plead with the young people? I don't know where you're from tonight, but I'm going to tell you what. Whatever started in the Spirit, it cannot end up in the flesh. We've got to keep this at all costs tonight. Let me preach my heart tonight. We need more than just talent tonight. We need more than good oratory in the pulpit tonight. We need the power of God residing in our midst in this hour. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see the lame walk. I want to, oh, I want it, I want it, I want it tonight. I know there's a whole lot of junk. I know there's a whole lot of false. I understand. Oh, I still believe in a real, genuine move of the Holy Ghost. I still believe that God can raise the dead today. I still believe that God can heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. He can save those that are lost tonight. Oh, God. Let's pray one for another right now. Come on, let's pray for a young person tonight. Pray for somebody beside you if it's appropriate tonight. 
Men to men, ladies to ladies, let's just pray a moment here. Let's begin to create an atmosphere for prayer just for a moment here. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated, please. Please keep that spirit of prayer on you tonight. Here's my burden tonight. Uh, Amen. I feel it in my soul. I'm telling you, we're raising up a shallow generation. Uh, You hear me tonight? We're raising up a shallow generation. We know how to go through all the ritual. Uh, We know how to go through all the routine. Uh, We know how to clap when everybody else is clapping and run when the music gets just right. Uh, But there's not that fire burning uh, in the innermost being of our bosom. Uh, I want to feel it tonight. I want more than hype tonight. I want something to happen in the Holy Ghost. Young preacher, if you're here tonight, don't preach just to move a crowd. You get you a burden. You get the burden of the Lord resting upon you. You get it in your heart. You get it in your spirit. And you preach it come hell or high water. Oh, come on. Help me preach tonight. You preach it whether they like it or not. All that matters is God likes it. You get it in your heart that if I don't preach it, somebody's going to burn in eternity. And you'll preach it with a passion. Say, why do you get all red in the face, preacher? Why do you get all excited and all emotional? I'm going to tell you why. Because it's about heaven and hell tonight. Hear me, young people. It's not a game. We've got to get this for ourselves. Parents, I'm in no position to admonish you. Amen. Other than what I feel in the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, and that's enough tonight. But we need to teach our kids how to pray. Something I've been burdened about at home, and that is, I watch our adults and they pray and they love God. Amen. They worship God. I'm telling you, they're hard to beat. But when it comes to their kids, uh, oftentimes I see them at an altar and I see them praying while their kids are back drawn in a coloring book somewhere. I mean, no disrespect to our own, but let me just tell you, I see it throughout Pentecost. Our kids are going to hell, and we're losing a generation. Somehow or another, we've got to pass this on. Maybe it's a little quiet now, but let me just tell you, too many of our homes, it's foreign to hear prayer going on. Hallelujah. We can come to the church house and we can make all kinds of noise and all kinds of racket. But our homes are devoid of prayer. Come on, parents. We need it to be where our kids are raised in a God-fearing home that is conducive for a move of the Holy Ghost and an atmosphere of prayer. I didn't really plan on preaching to anybody but the young folks tonight. Uh, But let me tell you, uh, they need to know what it's like to wake up in the morning and hear somebody moaning and groaning in the Holy Ghost. Hey, we got some young people that don't know what it's like to pray an intercessory prayer. We got some young people that don't know what it's like to travail in prayer until their gut is sore because there's no praying in the home. I 
I know this isn't popular tonight. Hey Amen. I know this isn't going to, going to get me no pat, him, a pat on the backs or anything like that. But I feel this tonight. Would you let me preach to you? I want my home to be a place where at any given time, I don't want it to be a place of contention and a place of strife. I want it to be a place where at any time, if I feel that drawing power, I want to be able to pray. I want guests to be able to come and I want them to feel, you know, maybe this is weird, maybe this is far out, but I want them to feel that ability to pray, that freedom to pray. I'm going to tell you what, if we don't have that in our homes, pretty soon we won't have it in our churches. We got liberty here tonight to pray because somebody prayed before they got here. You know what's going to make Sunday easier? It's when you go home this weekend and say, I'm going to pray before Sunday ever comes. I'm going to find myself a prayer closet. And when Sunday morning rolls around, we're going to have church like we ain't never had church. Amen. We're going to have freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost. We don't have any travailing prayer at our family altar because we don't have any in the church altar. I'm praying that the Holy Ghost would rest upon us tonight. Hallelujah. How long has it been since you just laid on a floor somewhere and just prayed when everybody else was going home and says, I don't care what they do, but I've got to have a move of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and praise the Lord one more time. Uh, hallelujah. Hey Amen. You may be seated. I know it's it's got to be getting late, but let me just preach on just a few more minutes. Hey Amen. Have a powerful church. We've got to have a prayerful church. Hey Amen. I thought about Samuel. Samuel was a young man that had some conviction. Hey Amen. While well, the sons of Eli were just reprobate concerning the faith Samuel made up his mind he was going to minister before the Lord. We need some young people that will get some, that will be young people of conviction and young people of principle that says, I don't care what everybody else does. I don't care how they dress. I don't care what kind of music they listen to. I don't care where they're going. I've got to minister before the Lord. I've got to call. Something is calling me to be, a, to be deeper in the walk of God, in the work of God. I've got to do something for God. The burden of the Lord is resting upon me. And I've got to pray. Amen. Samuel was born in direct answer to prayer. He came into life under prayer surroundings. His first months were spent in direct contact with a woman that knew how to pray. A praying mother put him in touch with the minister of the sanctuary and under the influence of the house of prayer. No wonder Samuel developed into a man of prayer. Amen. Do we want praying men in our church? We've got to have praying mothers to give them birth. We've got to have praying homes to influence their lives. And they've got to put them in praying surroundings. Praying Samuels come from praying Hannah's. Somebody said that converts take on the atmosphere that they're born in. Brother Townley, I know that you're expecting to see new birth in this church. I know that you've got a vision and I know that you've got a burden. I know there are other pastors in this building tonight that you want that more than anything. You want to see your church grow and you want to see people saved. But I'm going to tell you what, when we bring them in, we've got to bring them into the right atmosphere. If we want to raise up a powerful church, when they come in, there needs to be a prayerful church. There needs to be a people that knows how to call on God. There needs to be a church that worships God, that praises God with everything they've got inside of them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands one more time tonight. Amen. Let's bring our minds back in. Let's let the Holy Ghost minister to us just a few more minutes. Teach us to pray, God. Teach us to pray. Uh-huh. 
We're living in such a fast-paced world. You hear me, church? We're living in such a rushed, fast-paced world that if we're not careful, that spirit will come into the church. Amen. I, I like to, I don't want to drag things out tonight, but I'm just telling you what I feel tonight. If we're not careful, we'll just, we'll just want to move them through just like an assembly line and just, we'll call them up to an altar and we'll just pray over them for a few minutes, but we've got to get home because we've got things to do. I'm going to tell you, there's some people in this building tonight. It may take more than just two or three minutes. It may take more than just five minutes. But they may have to linger in the presence of God. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that says, I'll linger with them because I want to see somebody change. I want to see somebody pray through and get it deep in their heart, deep in their spirit tonight. Come on, I know we've got plans after church tonight. But I wonder if we could just get involved for just a little while longer tonight and say, I'll pray as long as it takes to pray. But whatever's got me bound, I've got to be set free from it. Young men, we need to make up our mind tonight that, God, I'm going to pray until I feel something burning in my soul tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. The book of Isaiah says, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. I want to tell you that this is the opportune time to pray. Don't wait until tomorrow. You need to pray today. Today is the day of salvation. This is the accepted time. Don't wait too late to pray. Somebody needs to hear me tonight. Don't you wait for another rally to pray through. Pray through tonight. Don't you wait for a revival to pray through. Pray through tonight. Don't you wait until your favorite preacher comes by. You may not have tomorrow. You only have tonight. You need to make up your mind. I'm going to pray again tonight. Some of you have been wrestling with temptations. Uh, You've been battling things in your spirit and in your mind. You need to make up your mind. I'm not carrying it out of here. I'm going to pray through over it tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, Come on, let's have church tonight. Let's pray somebody through tonight. Keep you clean and pure and give you a good godly spouse. Make you something in the kingdom of God. You say, but I, I, you know, I can't speak good and I can't sing good. And and so maybe I'll fit in with another crowd. I'm going to tell you what. I wasn't a preacher. I wasn't the son of a preacher. But I made up my mind. I wanted to live for God. I'm not bragging. I can't speak near as good as I want to speak. Amen. I can't preach like I want to preach. I hear some of these men that are here tonight. I hear them preaching. I think, man, I'd like to preach like that. And it's intimidating. But let me tell you what. What I want to do if I don't do anything else. I want to know how to pray. With every eye closed, I want you to hear me. There's a young man in our church. Amen. He would come. His grandmother would come faithfully. She's she's steady. She prays. She loves God. She began to witness to Steve and she began to tell Steve, Steve, you really need to go to church. So she talked him into coming to church with her. Steve went to an altar and he prayed. God really touched him. God moved for him. He felt the power of God and he began to witness to people on the job. And God had great things in store for Steve. But again, he got messed up with the wrong crowd. I'm sad to report to you tonight. Steve would call time and again. He'd say, Brother Fox, I need you. I need you to come and pray with me. And sometimes it would be in the wee hours of the morning. 
Amen. And it would come, I'm just going to be honest with you tonight, it become tiring at times because He would just come and you'd have to drop everything and go, but oh, I'd do it again. Amen. I wouldn't miss an opportunity if I had it. I would beg. I would plead for another opportunity. I'd go at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't fuss one minute about it because Steve is in Steve is in the hands of a just God. But I'm going to tell you what. As a tree falls, so shall it land. And Steve went out of this life. Amen. Because he, he was hooked on drugs and alcohol. And Steve went out of this life because, amen, the drugs had exploded his heart. He had a heart attack at 20-some years old. They called, and as they called so many times before, they called this time for prayer. But I'm going to tell you, it was too late to pray. You hear me tonight? It was too late. Don't you think you've got to tomorrow? You need to pray tonight. I'm going to open these altars tonight, but I want to tell you, I want there's some more of you. You're not really getting this tonight in your spirit. You're just fooling around, and you think you can just keep on playing games. But you need to stop your game playing and realize I can be something in the kingdom of God. I can be used in my church. I can be used to win a soul. I can be used, if nothing else, to be a prayer warrior. But I can't wait too late to pray. rich man cried and prayed and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame, but it was too late to pray. It can't happen because you're in hell. He prayed and he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would have sent him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them. It can't happen. You're in hell, friend. I'll tell you what, young person. You may be too proud to pray today. But if you don't pray here, one day you're going to pray in hell. Don't wait too late to pray. Would to God the church would pray right now. There is a hell. There is a real, literal hell. A lake of fire that cannot be quenched. Outer darkness, the Bible says. A bottomless pit, the place of everlasting punishment. A place where the worm dieth not. There is a hell. Hear me as they're coming tonight. One poor soul entered the school of prayer after his arrival in hell. He asked for relief from his agony, but it was refused. He asked that a beggar warn his brothers, but he was torn down. He was praying to Abraham, a man. He could not locate God. He dared not ask to get out. He plainly knew that it was beyond all hope. Prayerlessness on earth unanswered in hell. He suffers on as the man who learned to pray too late. Don't wait too late to pray. Mama, if you don't want to weep over that boy now, you'll weep someday. Daddy, if you're too big and too proud to weep today, you'll find yourself weeping someday. Why don't you find yourself a place to pray? Come on, help enlarge herself. Hell's making a bid for your soul tonight. How long's it been since you wept for a soul? How long's it been since tears ran down your face as you prayed and cried for a soul? Somebody's going to hell tonight if we don't pray, church. Hear me, somebody's going to burn in hell if we don't get a burden tonight. Let the burden of the Lord rest upon us. Come on, 
not yet cry out. Weep out tonight. Cry out to God before it's too late tonight. It's been too long since I've wept in your presence. It's been too long since the warm tears flowed down my face. God, break me again in your presence tonight. God, let us lose all pride tonight. Oh God, put some convictions in our hearts. Oh, God, give us a love for truth. Don't give up. Come on, Mama, don't give up. You got one more night to pray for that boy. You got one more night to pray for that girl. Come on, Daddy. Come on, pray for him tonight. Don't give up. It's not hopeless. God can still move, God can still work. Is there a backslider somewhere that we need to pray for? Is there a lost loved one somewhere that we need to pray for tonight? young men, let's be strong in the spirit. Let's be strong in prayer tonight. Come on, your pastor's dependent on you. Your pastor's counting on you to be the strength of the church. Hallelujah! God, let us get in our heart tonight.
people, I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. Come on, there's people getting a breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Come on in Jesus' name. He cut up those sandalabas and the lobos. Oh, let the Holy Ghost touch you in Jesus' name. Let the Spirit of the Lord restore you in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus' name. There's deliverance in the house right now.
Why don't we stand and sing it together for above all else? For above all else. For above all else. like to tell the Lord thank you for what you've been blessed to hear tonight heart and in your spirit hallelujah oh I thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord I thank you thank you for bringing us into the spirit thank you for bringing us to prayer Thank you for bringing us to repentance. Thank you for bringing us to renew it. Thank you for restoring our souls and our burden and desire to pray. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. I thank you. pray one more prayer before we're dismissed tonight. I'd ask you to reach over and pray for someone that's near you if it's appropriate. Ask the Lord to bless them, to meet their needs, to work in their lives, to guide and direct them. Pray for them. God, lead them on to greater victory. God, anoint them in prayer. Let this burden linger in their hearts. This passion and desire, God, remain in their souls. The Word, God, continue to be effective in our spirit, Lord. Oh, God, we're committed and into Your hands. Believe in God in the name of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. God, you have purpose and you have ordained. In the name of the Lord, that's it. Pray like you have a burden for your friend. Just express it to the Lord. God, I want you to keep them. God, I want you to touch them. Use them for your glory, God. Save them in 
Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. Send revival again, God. Send revival again, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Same. Thank you, Brother Fox, for obeying the Lord. Given to us the mind of the Spirit. Thank you, young people, for your openness and responsiveness to the Word of the Lord and to the Spirit of God. Pray this Word will abide in your heart. You take it home with you tonight. Let it make a difference the way you live your life tomorrow. The Spirit and the attitude that you approach your local assembly on Sunday morning. God bless you. Stay on the firing line. Do the work of God. Live for God. Serve God. Let the favor and blessings of God be upon you. Thank you for coming, all of the ministering brethren, the pastors. God bless you. Thank you for coming to this service tonight, each and every one of you. We're blessed that you were with us. Amen. And um, again, for all of those that are interested in going to the Youth Fellowship, all you have to do is just go Cutting Avenue, take a left right on Cutting Avenue. And the Church of Christ will be right on the right, just a little ways up. And uh, they'll be having fellowship in the gym, and the food will be prepared. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.